There, it was trying to reconnect earlier, and now it's connected. Good evening. Hello. Good Hello. evening, everybody. Hello. This is going to be an unusual. Uh... Hi. <laughs> I'm in my PJ. <laughs> the PJs. Okay, we're going to uh, change our schedules a little bit, and we're going to be doing these. Uh, we thought we'll do the commentaries in the evenings now. Uh, to uh, better prepare ourselves for the mass the following day. So instead of doing it in our usual uh, breakfast uh, session, uh, we'll have a little change of schedule. It also suits us a little bit better in terms of um, the activities of the day. So we will do our commentaries now in the evenings. But then again, you know, there's no telling. We might also change schedules along the way. It only depends on how it suits the other activities that um, any busy household with six kids would normally uh, experience uh, in a day's uh, schedule. So today we're going to read uh, tomorrow's gospel, which comes from St. Matthew, chapter 23, verses 1 to 12. Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, the scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore, do and observe all the things whatsoever they tell you, but do not follow their example. For they preach, but do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to carry, and lay them on people's shoulders but they will not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. They love places of honor at banquets, seats of honor in the synagogues, greetings in marketplaces, and the salutation, Rabbi. As for you, do not be called Rabbi. You have one teacher, and you're all brothers. Call no one on earth your father. You have but one father in heaven. Do not be called master. You have one master, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. But whoever humbles himself will be exalted. So again, this is a very beautiful, very rich gospel that we're going to be reading in tomorrow's Mass. And uh, uh, I'd like to tackle here uh, these words of our Lord. All their works are performed to be seen. All their works are performed to be seen. He's, of course, referring to the scribes and the Pharisees, the leaders of the Jewish people, who seem to uh, take pride in the good things that they do. They take pride in their knowledge of the law. They take pride in the fact that they are looked up to as leaders of the people. And because of that, they have become vain. That instead of doing things in order to love God and serve God by their ministry, what they end up doing is just flaunting their piety, just flaunting their goodness, so-called goodness, and reaping all the uh, praises that the ordinary folk who follow them are, uh, are wont to give them. So this is, this is the sin of vanity, the sin of vain glory that the Pharisees and the scribes and these leaders of the Jews have fallen into. Now, you and I, you and I who are trying our best to become saints, you and I who are trying every day to try to practice some virtue, you know what? We can also fall into this very big tendency, very big temptation of vainglory. Okay? Some of you are leaders in your own right and you are leading other groups of 
boys and girls, leading boys in the altar, leading girls in the choir. Okay? And, uh, and um, uh, we are somehow uh, also perceived as, uh, as uh, leaders in many other ways, in business, in, in, in homeschooling, in, uh, in many of our other affairs. We tend to influence our environment with our, with our work, with our words, with our example. But let us not lose sight of why we do these things. Let us, not, let us not lose sight of why we are even trying to do good and trying to live a life of sanctity and trying to practice the virtues. There is only one worthy motive for that, for all of the good things we do. And it is for the greater glory of and honor and love of God. Okay? For the greater glory and honor and love of God. No other reason, no other motive is worth living for. No other reason is worth doing the good things we do for. If all we are trying to do is to be perceived as being good by other people, we have already reaped our reward, as Jesus himself said. Eh? We have already reaped our reward. But that is not the reward worth achieving. That is not the reward worth fighting for. That is not the reward worth working uh, for sanctity for. The only worthy reward is to see God face to face in the beatific vision in heaven forever. Forever. That's the only thing we're working for. That's the only thing worth working for. That is the only thing worth living for. And let us not lose sight of that. When we try to obey God, do the virtues, practice the virtues, obey the commandments, uh, fulfill our acts of piety when we pray we go to mass we try to do things well when we study earnestly and try to learn our lessons properly when we serve others when we serve our brothers and sisters when we do acts of charity towards other people any good work that we do let us always keep that in mind we're only doing it for the greater glory and honor of God and for the love of God not for our own self-aggrandizement, not for our own self-satisfaction, and not so that we would appear good for others. So the cure, the cure for vainglory, for vanity, is the virtue of humility. humility. The virtue of humility, where precisely we do our best, okay? We do our best. We don't try to uh, hide how good we are. Because that's not true. If we are good at something, let's excel in it. Let's do our best in that. But not just to reap the, 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 the praise of others. We do our best in everything we do. And we try to teach others to do, to do their best also. In order to give greater glory and honor to God. Because you don't want to give God mediocre work. right? You don't want to offer to God uh, something that's a product of uh, sloppy work or your mediocrity. You don't like that. That's not worth offering to God. That's, uh, that's precisely the kind of uh, uh, offering that uh, uh, Cain you know, offered to God in the Old Testament. And that is why God uh, did not uh, favor him. Eh? And uh, that's what uh, you know uh, led him to jealousy, and he killed his brother Abel. See, so, so uh, we have to give our best for God. We have to work hard and work well, and give our best to God. But, but precisely the motive is not for ourselves, not for our self satisfaction. It is for the greater glory and honor of God. And then. While we do our best in everything we do, let us also 
be modest about our achievements. Right? And we don't praise ourselves <laughs> for, the, for the good things that we do and, and the, for excelling in the things that we do. Rather, uh, we, it's best to be a little bit more modest in, in, in this regard because we recognize that we have our limitations. We have our, we have our own uh, uh, mistakes and we are not perfect. So if ever we do good things, if ever we are perceived to be doing good things, if ever we are achieving things, let us always recognize that we're able to do those things thanks to the grace of God. Okay? Thanks to the grace of God. We supply our 100% effort, but really most of the good fruit that comes out of our best effort is a consequence of the grace of God. And let us not lose sight of that. Because once we lose sight of God's grace and God's contribution in our good work, then we will just fall into vanity. We will think that it's all a consequence of my perfection. It's all a consequence of because I am so good, I am so smart, I am so this and I am so that. Okay? Remember that everything we have comes from God and that is why we have to use everything we have everything that God gave us all our talents all our abilities all our capabilities have to be used in order to serve God okay those are the best uses of our uh, virtues of our perfections of our talents and of everything good about us and that is humility. That is the way to practice the virtue of humility. And look at what our Lord promised. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Exalted by who? By God. Eventually exalted by God in heaven, given a place of honor <coughs> with God in heaven. Okay. So as we uh, cap the night, as we prepare for sleep and uh, for Mass the following day, let us keep in mind these thoughts and let's pray about these thoughts and these, these things. So